Installing Garage Door Header Set the height of the bottom of the garage door header to the desired height. The most common height of a garage door is 7 feet, but you can put in a taller door if necessary. You may find it easier to assemble the garage door header and attach the brackets while it's on the ground. Then, put the door header up and screw it in place. Assemble the vertical header brace and attach its brackets on the ground. Now, install the vertical header brace in the center above the door header with two angle brackets at the bottom and a flat bracket at the top on the inside of the building. The brace should be plumb. If you're putting in a door that's taller than 7 feet, you'll need to cut the vertical header brace to fit your door height. Step 8. Installing Side Walk-In Door Frame and Optional Window Frame the side door can be placed in any of the side openings in the building frame. The walk-in door frame is made of 2 by 3 tubing. There's a horizontal header tube and a vertical door jab. These combine with an already installed side post to create the rough opening for your door. And like before, check your manual for the measurements and installation specifics. Now, choose where you want the door to go and put the door header between the side posts that are already there. Before positioning the door jam, make sure that the door will be to the side of the frame away from the anchor bolt. Put the door jam in place and use it to help you position the door header before you lock it in with the angle brackets. Then attach an angle bracket to the top of the door jam and a flat bracket to the bottom. Be sure to install the brackets on the inside of the building away from the inside of the door opening so they don't get in the way of the door. Keep the building frame sections plumb as you install the door frame. The rough door opening must be 38 inches wide and 81 and 3 quarter inches tall to fit a standard 3680 pre-hung door. The door is not included with your VersaTube building kit so you can choose the door that works best for your needs. Install the door according to the door manufacturer's instructions. Check your manual for other installation tips. Step 9. Installing Purlins and Girts Purlins are the reinforcing supports that go between the roof frame assemblies, and girts are the reinforcing supports that go in between the vertical supports on the sides, front, and back of the buildings. It's important to make sure that all of the vertical supports are plumb, so that the purlins and girts fit properly. As determined earlier, your building uses either tubular purlins and girts, as shown on the left of this illustration, or hat channel, as shown on the right, on the roof and sides of your building. If your building calls for tubular purlins and girts, refer to the layout on page 16 of your instruction manual for the location of the purlins and girts. Spacing will differ depending on both the width and height of your building. Notice that there are two types of connecting brackets for the roof purlins and the side or end girts. Single brackets are used to attach purlins or girts at the ends of the building or at windows and doorways. Double brackets are used to attach purlins and girts in the center sections of the buildings, where they are located on both sides of the 2-inch wide frame members. In places that purlins or girts are going next to a 3-inch frame member, this occurs on the front enclosure of the building, out. use two single brackets overlapped like this. Use the number 2 square drive self-drilling screws to fasten the brackets to the building frame. Use one screw per flange or tab. Use two panhead screws to attach single bracket tabs that will be on the outside of the building like we're showing you here. You can see here how the purlins and girts are screwed to their brackets. The same technique works for both purlins and girts. This is a place 
where it may be real handy to have a clamp to hold one end of the purlin or girt in place while you screw in the other end. Again, check your manual for specific information on purlin and girt spacing. The girts on the front and back of the building should line up with the girts on the side of the buildings to keep everything looking good so that you'll have an easier job of keeping the screws lined up when you attach the sheet metal covering to the building. Continue until you have installed all of the tubular purlins and girts in the walls and roof of your building. If your building uses hat channel on the roof and sides, refer to the layout on page 18 of your instruction manual for the location of the hat channel. Spacing will differ depending on both the width and height of your building. When using hat channel on the sides of your building, you will need to cut out around the side entry door frame and any window framing that you are installing. As shown in this illustration, one run of hat channel is installed one inch up from the slab or bottom of the base rails. Begin at the bottom on one side of your building with the lower edge of the hat channel one inch up from the concrete slab. The end of the hat channel should start one inch off the edge of the corner frame post. Drive two self-drilling screws, as shown, on each end of the hat channel. Then proceed to attach the hat channel with two screws at each building truss, as shown. The ends of the hat channels should come together in the center of the frame sections and attach with two screws, as shown here. Repeat this process to install the hat channel sections on the roof and the sides of your building. As the next two illustrations show, when you reach a doorway, you must cut the hat channel to fit at both the bottom run and any middle runs. At the top of the door opening, you will need to cut two short, two-inch long pieces of hat channel and install as shown to provide a mounting surface for J-trim around the door. A 42-inch piece of one and a half inch square tubing with two pre-drilled holes is provided to block along the top of the door opening. Special two-inch long panhead screws are also provided to attach the blocking tube to the building frame. This close-up shows the positioning of the blocking tube and the short hat channel pieces. Refer to your instruction manual for details. Similar blocking tubes are used to frame out around optional window openings. If you're installing window frames in your building, refer to your instruction manual for directions. Step 10. Installing door and optional window trim. Cut two pieces of J-trim for the sides of the door. They should go from the sheeting ledge to the top of the door, or the underside of the door header. Attach side J-trim on both sides of the door flush with the door frame using the panhead self-drilling screws. Place one screw at the top of the trim, one at the bottom, and one in the center. Now, cut one piece of J-trim two inches longer than the inside dimension of the door frame. Your kit may use J-trim above the door instead of the trim pictured here, but the installation method is about the same. Note that this piece of J-trim will extend out to match the outside of the side J-trim. Cut two one-inch long slits in the bottom corners of the door header trim on both ends to create a tab that can fold down into the side trim when installed. Now, place the header trim on top of the side J trim, fold down the end tabs that you created, and attach the flange to the rough opening frame with the same screws. Place one screw at both ends of the trim. 